Who's the left? I'm Laura Faith Smith. I'm the voice of Princess Rosalina for Nintendo, um, as well as Noelle in Genshin Impact and Kana in Fire Emblem Fates and uh, a few other things. So that's me. Awesome. I'm Justin Cook. It's nice to see everybody here. I am getting undressed. I don't mean to. All right. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, Justin Cook, I do uh, Yusuke Yurameshi from Yu Yu Hakusho and uh, a few other fun characters. Kirishima, who works awfully a lot with this fellow right here. Yes, the aforementioned uh, My Hero character. I am Fat Gum. My name is Kyle A. Bear. I uh, voice that character. Also, Gohan, older Gohan from Dragon Ball Z, super, superhero, which is uh, going to be on Blu ray on the 14th. So, pick up your copies, everybody. Uh, and we are having a great time here in Stockton. So, thank you for coming out and supporting us all this weekend. It's great to see your shining faces, especially on a day where it's a little easier to walk around than yesterday. Crazy crowds, but you're here, and that's awesome. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. What do we talk about? Yes, what shall we talk about? Yeah. Dragon Ball Z and One Piece of crossover that's finally getting the English film that's coming out next week. Oh! Yeah, Episode 590, I think, of One Piece. Yeah. What would you like to know about it? You know, I've learned in my days that I'm just thankful it's coming out, right? And I don't, I don't necessarily want to get in there and figure out how the sausage is made, right? So, but happily it is. So. Yeah. We figure better late than never. I mean, there's all sorts of OVAs and things through the years on various properties. They're like, when are we going to get to dub that? It's like, and then whoosh, crickets. And yeah, what is... Um, all right, we, we, we were talking behind the scenes, and it's like, yeah, what, what Toye does, for example, their, their, their process, their marketing and all that is not privy. We're, we're not privy on the English side yeah. as, as with being the license holder for these shows. So there you go. But I'm super happy it's coming out. Yeah. That kind of came out of nowhere. I like getting that email saying, so, we got a crossover episode. We're getting the band back together. <laughs> Yeah, and the band got back together. But for those who don't know about the process, we actually don't record together. We have to be individual, in some cases from home, and others we go to a physical studio, and we get directed, uh, in my case, long distance. I live in L.A., so I went to a local studio, and we hop on line where it's two hours ahead in Dallas with and we're coordinating together with engineers on their side and my side, and we're recording. So, fun times. Yeah. We do little dances. Yeah. Just like that. Question then? Pretty much when everything's released. I mean, maybe occasionally you get to sneak a view of something as you're walking to record or that kind of thing. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, it's just they just need me for the voice. <laughs> like I could say, like um, I've been in a situation a couple times where there was a mock-up of the game. Can you guys hear me? Okay, am I loud enough off the mic? Okay, okay. Um, there's there's times where I sometimes seeing kind of a mock-up of the game it wasn't in final thing and they were like actually showing me kind of here's the action of the character they're going to run and they're going to swing off this thing and land and you were kind of coming up with what that would sound like so in that case you were getting a bit of a sneak peek of something but then there's plenty of times you go in and you are just recording straight lines to something like you have the script but you don't really know where those live and things but every now and then you know you're actually trying to do that but it's, it's it seems like it's just such a mix i don't know what your guys's experience is yeah, there, there have been projects I've recorded where they actually have rap parties. We're done with the season, so we're all getting together, and we'll screen it at the studio or something. They'll, they'll have a, actual, a, a screening room and fit us all in there, and it's like we get to see that and then hang out with each other, some of us for the very first time. There are people that we've worked on projects, and I've still not met to this day, I, and so I've strange. I've for uh, Nintendo since 2013, and mm -hmm. I just met Samantha and Kenny and Charles last year when I started doing cons. 
Wow. Like, because we'd never recorded together. So I didn't know them till last year. So it was like, thank you to Comic Con for. Yeah. You know, and then there were these people I just loved. But... The, the con scene will also happen where we have chances to meet other people, but we just don't. We get tied up with our own schedules and things. I didn't get to meet Charles Martinet until uh, the, the premiere, I guess, of right. Superhero. Yeah. Because Mario is in Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Not right. Mario. But... Collide. Yes. Yes. He's he's a not such nice guy, but you know he is a nice guy. Charles Moore is a very very good guy. Acting, acting. Yes. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yeah. What's your favorite episode of Mike? Episode four. What's my favorite episode of Mike? Of my hero? Wow. Well, I think the the whole big there's a big fight scene with a big. Uh, change in physical form to uh to old fat gum i like to say he becomes fit gum <laughs> but the stakes the emotional stakes are there and i have i have it was it was very powerful and moving to record but even more so hearing the feedback from the fans who come through the lines and say that fight scene that transformation and it's like oh man all the feels and i'm like oh i love that it's such icing on the cake when it, you know we're having fun doing what we do and we're blessed to do what we do. But when we hear your experience as viewers and it's like, oh my gosh, it's like, wow, it's so cool and invigorating to, to help us keep moving forward and giving 110% because without you guys, we wouldn't get to do things with great emotional arcs and, and evolutions of characters and whatnot. Absolute fact. It's like doing theater at the end of a performance. You kind of get that adoration as it were from the audience but working in this kind of a media or a medium you you don't really get that and so it's these little moments here and some of these stories or even some of the things that get mentioned online that's that's where we discover that you know hey you're watching <laughs> we like that it's really important <laughs> yeah. and things come out sometimes so much later than you worked on them you forget sometimes you're like oh right that's out now like that i did that i signed an nda i couldn't talk to anybody about it i forgot that it was happening and then suddenly, you know, suddenly be in the world and you're like, I'm in that. Okay, yeah. And someone will tag you on Twitter yeah. saying, great job is so-and-so. It's like, is that out? Yeah. Oh, it must be. <laughs> Search on Google or GameStop or it's like, oh, it's out. Okay, cool. How'd you know? <laughs> they always know. First world problem. When you record on so many projects, you forget what you've done. <laughs> and it's like something, you know, like a, like a Street Fighter VI. I started recording a year ago and it's coming out this summer. So when you're translating or localizing, they call it, and they're doing a local English adaptation of, of a foreign property like that, it takes forever. It's a lot quicker turnaround with anime since many shows are now pretty much day and date almost. Two weeks usually. Two weeks. Yeah, simulcast, simul dubs. Yeah, this wasn't a thing like 10 plus years ago. Space Dandy was an interesting. That was the first one. The very first one on Cartoon Network. You guys remember Space Dandy? I know some of you are very young, but yeah. maybe Space Dandy was awesome. Here, here. Great show. You guys have a favorite character you've done? Ooh, that's a tough one because they all live in here. They all, they're all in our multiple personality heads. So if I pick one, the other ones get angry or sad. <laughs> they do. We yeah. have to, we have to have a, you know, have to have an intervention and family therapy. <laughs> they all sit in a circle. Yeah. I mean, it sounds snarky, but I could say, what's your favorite role? The next one, because we are not, you know, nine to five full-time employees. We are contract, which means we are freelancers. We don't know where the next gig's coming from generally until someone emails, texts, calls saying, we need you next week. Otherwise I have nothing going on. I don't know when, what, what do I do after that paycheck shows up? So stressful, but it's part of the deal. <laughs> you were there before me because you were one of the very first people I met when I auditioned for Gohan in 2000. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the answer is I'm sure we hoped so. Right. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard to honestly. I was sucked into the story of 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 that series, and so it it became. I wasn't I wasn't keeping a pulse on how well is it being taken by the audience, or you know how well is it doing on on television. 
none of that stuff it's funny but as i think back none of that really mattered it what mattered was was presenting a, a really great story you know that was given to us I and mean, this was we were probably out of our league to a, a pretty large degree uh being in north texas and and kind of putting this stuff together and i was ultimately following chris sabbat's lead the uh, the entire time and uh so but he and i would geek out on the on the storyline and on characters and casting and you know, hearing new actors come in and, I mean, literally watching characters kind of come to life. So the whole thing was more exciting than anything else. But there wasn't ever a feeling of like, you know, we're sitting on gold. That, yeah. That never happened. You kind of hope for the best because, you know, you had the, the lead time of a, a, a property like Dragon Ball starting 10 plus years before we were dubbing it in English. You know, Dragon Ball's from what, the late 80s? Yeah. And then Z, and then GT finished in like 96. What were we doing in 96? I think we were... Trying we, to figure it out. <laughs> trying to figure out. Like, so, yeah, it starts up in Canada and then comes to Texas. Yeah. And now there's two dubs, depending on what version you're, you're watching. So there's a different cast. Uh, but I think in general, you, you hear the Texas dub, from what I understand, from the one that's on and yeah. what you can buy on Blu-ray sets and, and whatnot. But yeah, by the time I came on board, it was already number one on Cartoon Network. It was already huge. It had replicated the success that it's had in Japan, and that's always awesome to see. Yeah, it's great. I'd rather some of those that's why I was back home. How does it work like? Eat and fart a little cemetery for the path. I was defined to do the first in the package of the I came to voice acting because I was an actor first. Like, I, I was a theater actor and did a lot of theater. Whenever people are like, I want to get into voice acting, I'm assuming if you're I'm meeting them here, they're not talking about commercials. They don't want to be like, at U.S. Bank, blah, blah, blah. Um, which, but weirdly, can be kind of a character in itself, right? Like, it, like a more AI, you know, all sounding voice. But I, I was an actor, like a, you know, a trained theater actor. So that kind of makes that transition more natural. Like if, if you want to be in things like video games and anime, being able to act is imperative because you're playing characters in emotional situations or war or life and death. It's not about, I can do a funny voice, um, you know, or I can, I have access to doing a lot of voices. It's like, can you do that voice when it's under duress? Can you do that voice in love? Can you do that voice super afraid? Can you do that voice in rage? And that's what you're really talking about. Um, so. I came to it as just by being an actor, and then that made my agent submit me for things where acting was involved, things like anime, video games. Yeah, it, it, uh, my start was in uh, community theater uh, when I was a kid. I was a bit hyperactive, and mom needed me to do... What was your first show? Best Little Christmas Pageant oh, Ever. Okay. <laughs> I think I've played just about all of those bad kids uh, all the way up. But it, mm -hmm. yeah, but so acting is... The challenging thing with voice acting is they start taking things away from you, right? Because when you're an actor, you've got your body, you've got your the whole blocking, everything that you're doing, it's all kind of, it works together. And when they start taking away strengths, right? You're, let's take this away, let's take that away. And now you're just acting only with your voice and to a character that's already animated on screen. If I feel like if you did to have that, all that other information, uh, starting to pull things away, that would become very difficult. So it's just, it's, a, it's pretty tough. But I also had a lot of radio background. So I did some radio work as well, which also helped with mic technique as well as the engineering side of recording, which is kind of the way I got into voice acting ultimately. Yeah. I also came from radio, not a theatrical background. And working in radio in particular, I was working for a kid's radio format, Radio Disney. And we got to do a lot of character voices and create characters and all that. It was very much an acting, a performance kind of thing. So it was it was great. So when I went in for the audition for Dragon Ball Z in 2000, they asked me what acting experience I had. And I was hoping, fingers crossed, like, I worked for Radio Disney. They said, okay, that counts. It's like, that worked. Did that at least? Good. Because, yeah, like, like she was saying, it's not about doing impressions or having a bunch of silly voices or your friends and family saying, you have a great voice. You should be a voice actor. It's so much more involved than that. And we've all learned coming up through the ranks. And as we get more experienced and seasoned and honing our craft, we're able to pass that knowledge on to you and the next generation of people. But recording from home, I'm spoiled by it. I love it. Um, I understand why the engineers hate it because everyone's recording on different uh, microphones in different environments and they have to mix it, make it sound like it's uniform. 
But in terms, in terms of convenience, isn't it great not to have to sit in traffic? Yeah, I mean, Cl- clothes are optional. And, and now, right? And now, even like, like even like on camera, like auditions, a lot of those happen on Zoom. Oh, okay. I actually had an in cam on in person commercial audition a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, as the people were like nervously pacing and like you know muttering lines and stuff, I was like, oh, I don't miss the tension of that room. Like I've been used to just being at home, and you can, you know. You don't have to look for, I'm not even wearing shoes half the time, and you're not, you're not looking, yeah. rushing like for your parking or sweating and showing up in LA heat. I was like, I forgot what that was like to have to go somewhere in person and to, you know, be pulled together and then be around people before, before you go in. Yeah. And I'm wondering if the, the post situation where a lot of actors are recording from home, I wonder if that's going to become more the norm because for many years it would be like, what do you say when you want to be an actor, voice actor? And he says, like, go where the work is. And I think that's still true to a degree, but I think I think it's becoming more and more, at least on indie projects, maybe some mainstream ones too, where, where there are video games that uh, are have international cast. There are people that hop on Skype from the UK and I whatnot. I an audio drama that I've been working on for, it's called The Sojourn, and um, we have... Like always just like all been like in uh, when I started, some people were in Australia, some people in the UK, some people were in Canada, some people were in L.A., some people were in San Francisco and somewhere cool. else. So we were like coordinating world time zones literally to like, you know, the, the Australia guy was like, well, World Cup is on. So I don't mind that it's three in the morning here right now. <laughs> the, how many are you at Apex fans? Is anyone Apex? Um, that was Ben Pendergrass. He's in it with me and he was in Melbourne at the time. We first started working on it, and now he's in L.A. too. But, um, yeah, that's how it's always been from the start. Like, it just is, it, and as people move around, we just always coordinate our readings. Yeah. It's a small world after. Okay. Uh, before I come on, I'll be saying to offer my question, that which character's voice? Look at them, Steve. Got all of this accent in here. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, you know, we were the wide read. They're too bad for them. I'd say it's not necessarily for me, not a character, but a type of character, which would be vocally stressful is the, the buzzword they use. In other words, you gargle razor blades and scream your life out. Dragon Ball Z is a great boot camp for that. But plenty of RPG games, first person shooter games. There's so much screaming going on. So if you have to, you have a four hour session, a two hour, you can't get through it fast enough because you're like, uh, and you're having to like, oh, I got my hot tea and I got my... Chinese cough syrup, which is magical, believe it or not, helps coat your vocal cords and protect them. You gotta. And when they let you do the screaming at the end. Yes. Which is nice, and like kind of do everything else. Even when I audition, I do all the screaming, it mostly for editing because your sound waves go from this to like this, mm-hmm. and trying to get everything balanced out. But that's I'd say the same for me. Like like I've done I can I can do demon voice like where you're way down there. But like if you. If you establish a character like that, you got to be able to do it. So I always say, if you're auditioning, don't establish a voice that's going to be almost impossible for you to maintain for a long recording session because you're just going to have, you'll literally have smooth spots on your cords. Of, like, you know, there'll be no sound. Like if you ever have had a bad cold and you can't hit anything high. Yeah. It's just like a squeak. Into- yeah, and if you damage your voice during one session and you have another session scheduled later that day or even the next day, that may interfere with that. And then you have to... We have to, they do a mad scramble to reschedule actors and hopefully not recast you, you know, just because of time deadlines, you know, right? For sure. That's another, like, if you ever audition and you have a cold and then they love the way you sound, that's a bummer. Because it's like, how do you recreate it when you're healthy? Like, like if you've got that really low Deborah Vaccaro thing going on. That's right. You've got that cool rasp. Phoebe's, Phoebe's sexy voice, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> For this episode? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a look at it back. Yeah, to call me. There, there's somebody out in church to me, ship and dad will have Why? Out of the transformations? Yes, favorite transformation. Well, I'm a little biased, but there's a certain transformation in the latest movie. <laughs> I know we, we won't go spoilers because there are some people that want to see it and haven't seen it yet, but March 14th on Blu ray. Check it out then. That's a personal fave of mine. I don't know. I mean, uh, all of Boo's transformations as he would consume other players, as it were. I and mean, all that was a lot of fun. 
But uh, I don't know. I think anything where their hair grows really long. What is that? And the GT, when they go Super Saiyan, whatever it is? It's before. Su- Super Saiyan hair band? Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's... <laughs> Yeah. And when you do your lines for both anime, have you ever noticed any differences in how like, we would say your lines? For a little bit. Like, we can enjoy the, the same character all the time. No, that's a cool thing about how you have to sit the back. No, the staff would be a cool job. I have noticed that, you know, at a session, they'll play a sample from a previous session just to make sure that we can get back into voice. And if we happen to be doing, say, a Dragon Ball game with our characters established from the anime, they'll play a little bit if we want, but we've been doing that one for so long, that's kind of different. But uh, I don't think there's any different approach to doing the character, especially if it's the same character from a game as as you did in the show or vice versa. I think they want to stay consistent. But I do like it when, like, there's the next time on that's slightly different. You know what I mean? Like they're showing lines from a previous one, but the animation has changed enough that you have to change or alter the line. Yeah. I always like to think that's just, you're you're viewing it through the eyes of another character who remembers it differently. <laughs> it's multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Surely there's another, qu- yes, sir. Out of the app, our games put her to about 30. Oh, the car is only for the fact that you have usually the whole game right in the case of an anime you may only get to see a new episode each week and so that can go on you know sometimes forever like already beat 16 pounds well i don't know video games may be yeah i mean i guess it just depends on you know is it dlc is it new content is it you know right that's true now in the world of dlc none of it ever ends it's all forever we like that. What's your favorite job? You know, uh, steady paycheck. We like that. <laughs> job security. That's my favorite project. The next one. The next one. Did you eat us with a salad of meat? Seriously. I think so I like is. the whole Trunks time traveling arc from Z. I think that's probably my favorite one. I dig Boo. Even though Gohan got shafted, but you know, it's still it's still a fun, still a fun arc. All right, guys, we got time for one more question. Yeah, Guys, did she burn right out the whole answer? So at least for late three of the day, though, where it comes, the it seems like I'll for a lot of countries characters so we were still. I was there during first reaction to sound sun. So I saw in all the dirty, based solely on like the eyes and noise. Well, so I think most people know this, but just in case, I didn't voice her in Galaxy. I'm the third actress to do it. So my first game was 2013 Super Mario 3D World. So everything from then to now. And so there were two other actresses. So like Harry Kane is the voice in most of the Smash games. Um, I think all the Smash games. And then Mercedes Rose was in, like, Galaxy 1 and 2. Uh, and you're right. Like, like doing Noelle in Genshin Impact, where she, like, has a story and speaks paragraphs sometimes. And, you know, like, there's really long sections of talking and conversations where they do the efforts is what you're talking about. Like, with that, <laughs> and taking damage and that kind of stuff. Like, that's so much of those racing games and the Mario games. So, yeah, that... And this character already existed when I took that on, so there was already, like, something to kind of go from, so I didn't have the experience of kind of creating something like that from scratch. But I guess the biggest thing to think about for me is just not making them all sound like Daisy Peach and Rosalina, you know, the female voices in that, trying to, like, keep them distinct, you know, like, that they're, that it, it all, as soon as women start talking in these, that higher register of stuff, it's easy for it to all kind of sound the same. So... Just thinking about the backstory, you know, that they give a character like that, that, you know, Rosalina is elsewhere and she's not being rescued all the time. And, you know, like that, that she's just like a little bit of a motherly, cooler, quieter sense about her. Uh, but a lot of it, you're really relying on the engineers, to, you know, to like listen to it. And then they're listening to everything they've got. You got that micro thing of what you're working on. And then you've got these people outside of it who are saying, OK, changes. That's why it's so great to work with a director. You know, you're, Cueing some job. And another reason why it's great to have a theater background 
when you or, or acting background of some kind when you go into this because you're taking direction so much. You know, you're not just left to your own devices. That that ability to have someone give you feedback and then do something different is a big deal. Did that answer your question? All right, guys. I think that's about it. This we're about you guys are coming out. Everybody, Thank you guys. Thank you.